Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. I'm here with James, who we probably met like for the first time like less than a half an hour ago. James is a good example of the good things of carpal tunnel surgery and maybe some of the more not so good things. He had bilateral carpal tunnel surgery and he now was referred to the office here because of continued complaints of his one hand, uh, he still has some discomfort and some numbness in his right hand that wasn't resolved with the surgery. And his left hand, uh, the surgery was successful. So I'm gonna show you after we hear from him, I'm gonna show you with high resolution ultrasound why the one surgery on his left was successful and the other one wasn't. So James, we appreciate you, you talking. Okay. Now, tell us the symptoms that you had prior to the surgery. What symptoms did you have with your hands? Well, I had them numbness really bad. And then sometimes it would just throb and wake me up at night and so forth. That was before the surgery. And then after surgery, a couple of weeks afterwards, the left one started getting real good. This one is still had the tingling all the time it seemed like and the surgeon told me it would take time to eventually get over it well time and time went by and it still have a lot of numbness burning type of thing going on in my hand and that's when i was recommended to come and see you and see what yeah. what we could do and uh so hopefully with this, I'll be able to do everything you do want. E do everything that uh, yeah. I did before surgery. Okay. The surgery was about nine months ago, so it was about nine months ago. So would you yes. say it was a hundred percent successful on this one? Yeah. yeah. Like, like you did you get all your feeling back? I got all my feeling. Okay. Once in a while, I wake up in the morning, it might be a little tingly, but okay. uh, yeah, it's been. Do good. you have a sense in this one? the symptoms are the same, they're worse, they're better after the surgery, like overall? Overall, it's a little bit worse. Okay, a little bit okay, worse. that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, and then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do an ultrasound and we're gonna look at this one first, then we'll look at that one, and you and I will look at the difference. Okay. Okay. See the nerve right here? Now I'll just have you go like that. See, see how it moves, see how it moves down, then it moves up, then it moves over. So we could see that this nerve on the successful side, it's movable and we saw the size. Now let's look at the, the side that had surgery that wasn't successful. Okay, so we see that this one is basically 50% bigger. So on the asymptomatic side, this nerve, the median nerve is swollen the area is 0.22 centimeters squared and the other side was 0.15. So it's 50% more swollen. So it's 50% more swollen on this side. Okay, so there it is. Now do that motion again, do that motion again. And you, what you see is, see how it's stuck there? It's not moving like the asymptomatic side. So this is a really good example of after the surgery, the nerve wasn't compressed anymore on the left side and the size went down. On this side, it's still compressed and it's all swollen and it's stuck there and it's not moving. Nerve release, this is the fascia here and we see that we separated it, right? The nerve is here. The white there is the PRP. So I've definitely, right, I've coated your nerve with PRP to try to stimulate the repair of the nerve. And then I got a nice space here. And then because of the severity of the case, I'm gonna have to see you in two weeks, not to do the PRP part, but just to do the release. Then I'll see you in two weeks after that. And hopefully just after three, we'll see that the nerve isn't any more stuck on that fascia and as long as the nerve can move it'll the swelling is going to go away
The carpal tunnel is the tunnel through which the median nerve uh, traverses. So in, the median nerve innervates basically these three fingers and the sensation of the skin of these three fingers. And all I'm going to do is be doing an ultrasound like from here to here, from here to here. And what we're gonna see on the screen is the median nerve go from the normal size to a large size. So let's look at that now. So see the nerve right there. Now I'm gonna, we're gonna follow it. Okay, so now it's going up there. It's going up there. It's going all the way up here. It's going up here. See how big it is. See how big it is. See how, see how big that is. Now I'm gonna go back down. So we're gonna go back down we're going out of the carpal tunnel. We're going out of the carpal tunnel and you could see how little it is. Okay, now we're gonna look at the response of this patient to the first uh, hydrodissection. So we're gonna watch the nerve, this really big swollen nerve. Now let's have you move, have you move your fingers. So he's moving his fingers, he's moving his fingers. He's mo move the fingers. See how the nerve, it pops back and forth. See how the nerve pops back and forth? Prior to the hydrodissection or the nerve release, the nerve was stuck where it was getting compressed. So now it's moving much more like a normal nerve. And eventually the swelling of that is gonna go down. I'm going to release the nerve. So we're gonna stick a needle right here. The nerve is gonna be separated from the fascial plane. So we're going to release it again and eventually the nerve isn't gonna get compressed anymore and it's gonna move completely normally in the carpal tunnel and then the swelling is gonna go away and once that does, the pain, the numbness and all the symptoms will go away. So why don't we first talk about the symptoms now after two treatments that are better and then we'll talk about the symptoms that maybe you still have but what's absolutely better from the two nerve releases and in, in that that you've had well it's much better at night the throbbing is gone uh, so your sleep's better so i sleep much better it don't wake me up during the night um, can you during the day can you pretty much do most of the things you want to without symptoms pretty much yes yeah, yes yeah. yeah and then you yeah. said to me like tell us what symptoms maybe you still get like with playing cards or playing cards playing with the video uh uh laptop i i get a burning sensation okay. uh some uh, if i get up and walk around it yeah, goes then away it, then it goes, it goes away because the swelling is almost gone, because the swelling's almost gone, and it's no longer compressed. And I, I think what we should do is actually not treat you today, because I think it's going to keep getting better, getting better. And the really bad symptoms, of course, are gone. So here's, the, here's his median nerve right there. And you, it's basically almost normal size. And what you're going to see is when I first saw him, this thing was trapped here. It was swollen, the fascia here, it was basically adhered to the fascia and with nerve release, it's now been released. So now move, move, see how it moves? It now moves freely. So when he moves, look at how good that median nerve is moving. So we know that the swelling has gone down, it's no longer trapped, it now can move freely. So we know that the rest of the swelling should go down, but it's almost 100% back to normal. And this was all after he had already had surgery. So it was a very severe case of carpal tunnel syndrome. So anybody with carpal tunnel syndrome, I'd absolutely recommend this treatment, this conservative treatment before any surgical procedure for carpal tunnel syndrome is considered. And James only needed two visits. Thank you, thank you for letting us see that.